In today's video, I'll be showing you how to connect a GraphQL API with your AWS Amplify project. And this video will continue from my previous video. If you haven't watched my previous video, I showed you how to set up a AWS React project and connect authentication with it. And if you finish all the steps in my previous video, then I'm going to continue right where I left off. And just as a quick note, if you're seeing this visual issue with your login screen, uh, go to your code and just go to your app.css file and make sure just to add this uh, block of code and save it. And what you do should fix that issue. And so now we're going to go ahead and just create a GraphQL API that we can connect with our AWS Amplify project. And all the instructions that I'll be showing come from this article. And I'll be making sure to leave a link in the description so that you can follow along if you want. So just like this article states, the first thing we want to do is go ahead and run this command Amplify Add API inside of our Amplify project. And so now just switch back to Visual Studio Code and then type in Amplify Add API and then hit Enter. And here, select the GraphQL option and hit Enter. And here are a couple of different options. Go ahead and make sure the name is what you would like it to be. For authorization modes, go ahead and hit Enter and choose Amazon Cognito User Pool and hit Enter. And when it says Configure Additional Auth Types, click No. And then here for all the other options, just go ahead and click Continue. And here, go ahead and just click single object with fields. You can do other schema templates, but for the sake of this example, I'll just do the easiest option, which is single object with fields and hit enter. And then when it asks you want to edit the schema now, go ahead and just type in N for no. And once you have done all the steps correctly, you should see where it says successfully added. And now all we need to do is run Amplify push to push these changes to our AWS Amplify project. So I'll go ahead and just type in Amplify push and hit enter. And you, you'll see this option where it says like, are you sure you want to continue? Go ahead and just click Y for yes and hit enter. And it says, would you, would you like to create an API key? Go ahead and just click no. And when it asks you, do you want to generate code? Go ahead and click yes. And just click JavaScript if you're using JavaScript or the other options if you're using the other options. And here, just go ahead and click enter using the default options. And when it asks you, do you want to generate, update all possible GraphQL operations? Go ahead and just type in Y for yes. And here, just go ahead and click, click enter just to keep the default value. And now the resources should be updating in the cloud and I'll resume the video once it's done. And once the updates are complete, you should see a screen very similar to mine where it says like all resources are updated in the cloud. And now we'll go ahead and test the GraphQL endpoint to make sure it works. And the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and just go back to our AWS like website and go ahead and go to the DynamoDB tab of AWS. So you just go ahead and log into your AWS account and then search for DynamoDB inside the search bar and go ahead and click on it. And once you do, you should see a screen very similar to this. On the left hand side, go ahead and go to the explore items like option under the table options. And you should only see one table and it should be something very similar to to do hyphen followed by like a bunch of numbers and letters. And as you can see here, we don't have any items on this table because we haven't created any. So that's the first thing we're going to do. And the easiest way to do that is to go back to documentation and we can scroll down until we see a section where it talks about like uh, queries, mutations, and subscriptions. And the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and just copy these two lines here. And once you have both these values copied, go ahead and go back to your text editor. And let's just go ahead and copy our code, but comment it out for right now. And the reason we want to comment it out is that we need to make one more change before we can start like creating to do's and adding them to our database. And the one change we need to make is we need to change the permissions for this specific GraphQL API we made. And we can do that by going to the schema.graphql file that was generated for us. And once we're on this page, you can see the to-do model that was created for us. And we have two attributes of name and description. And now we just need to edit like one line of code in order for us to create, update, and delete the to-do items from this model. And all we need to do is go ahead and copy and paste this code. And all this specifies is it allows us as the owner to be able to create, update, read, and delete uh, anything that relates to this to-do model. So once you have this, go ahead and save the file. And now we just need to push these changes into our Amplify project. And you can do that by going to your terminal and just running Amplify push. And now you see it's like pushing the files. And it's going to ask you, are you sure you want to continue? Go ahead and just type in Y for yes. And when I ask you, would you like to create API keys? Just like no. And when I ask you, do you want to update your code? Go ahead and just click yes. And when I ask you, do you want to write, overwrite? Go ahead and just click Y for yes as well. And now it will be updating the resource in the cloud. And I'll resume this video once this is done. And now if we go back to our app.js file, we can go ahead and uncomment the code that we pasted from earlier. 
And now all we need to do is go ahead and create a to-do item uh, using this code. And we can do that by using the use effect hook and making sure that this like create command runs as soon as we like uh, run the page. So once we have the use effect hook ready, we can go ahead and just create an asynchronous function. And we'll just name this like create uh, to do item. And go ahead and copy and paste the code that we have here and go ahead and click save. And then making sure just to call the function as well. And then there's just one last thing that we need to do. And if we go back to the documentation, we just need to import both of these import statements that you see here. So go ahead and copy it and go back to our text editor and make sure just to import it like at the top of the file and go ahead and click save. And once you hit save, we can go back to our React project and then go ahead and just refresh. And now if we refresh our dynamic DB table, we now see a to-do was successfully created with the description and name that we passed in. So now if you just want to change the description or name of another to-do, we can just go back to our code and we can just change this to like my second to-do and just do like like test message and then go ahead and just click save and this will actually render the page so if we just go back to our dynamic db and refresh we can see that like the second to do was created as well and so now that we successfully created to do the next step we will do is to list the to do's from our database so we'll be listing both of these to do's so to start we can go back to documentation and we can go to the query section here and here we can just copy these two lines of code and then go back to our code and then go ahead and just paste it. And what both of these import statements do is like we're going to get the list to do function from our query file that was created as well as like the command to actually list the to do's. And so we can just do something similar where we can just create another async function and we'll just call it like list to do items and go ahead and just uh, paste the code here. And then we'll go ahead and just console log the output just to make sure we're getting back all the to-dos that we expect. And then go ahead, going ahead and just clicking save. And then also don't forget to actually like list the to-dos uh, each time we like run the page. We can also just comment out this create to-do item because we don't want to keep creating a to-do every single time. And once we have these changes, if we go back to the React application and hit refresh, we can see that there's some data being printed to the console and we can see that there's three uh, objects in our to-do item and it looks like we accidentally created a second to-do but as, but as you can see the list command does work and we're listing all of the information from our database so as you can see here we have three items in our database and we're now displaying three items um, in our console and i'll also show you how to display the actual to-dos on the actual page itself and we can do that by going back to the code and the first thing we want to do is go ahead and just like import the use state hook. And once we do that, go ahead and just like initialize a variable to hold our data. So I'll just call it like items and then also do like set items as well as just initialize it to an empty array. And before we can directly set the to do's array inside of our items uh, variable, uh, we need to go back and look at the structure of how the data is being returned to us and we see that's being stored in a array called items and so we just need to make sure we access this items array before we like store it inside of our items like variable and we can do that very quickly by just making sure we have access to the actual array so if you look here it's just to do's like dot data dot list to do's followed by items and hit save and now if we go back we can see that we're printing out the actual array of our items and now if we go back to the code we can go ahead and just call our set items function and go ahead and just pass in uh, this array and hit save and now if we paste this code snippet into our like return function and all this does is it maps through all of the items inside of the array and just prints out the item.name and also the description as well. Let's go ahead and click save. And now if we go back to the React project, we can see that the name and the description are being printed to the page now. And this is the end of the tutorial. I showed you how to connect a GraphQL API to your AWS Gamify project, as well as how to create items as well as list items from your DynamoDB table. If you run into any issues, please feel free to leave a comment and I'll do my best to get back to you. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please like the video and don't forget to subscribe for more content.